This is grape video 29, pruning equipment for the manual pruning of grapevines. Oh, grape pruning is enough of a challenge that you really want the right equipment to perform this task, or it will become very, very difficult if you use improper equipment or use equipment that is not kept in good repair. So you want to be careful to make some good choices on pruning equipment before you head to the vineyard. This video will help you along that way, but it's not intended to be a comprehensive review of equipment, but just a starter on this topic. So we hope it's something that will be helpful to you. First, we're going to say that we intend that none of the brands of equipment pictured or mentioned in this presentation are intended to be an endorsement of those products. The basic piece of pruning equipment is the pruning shear. And it is an important consideration when you begin pruning grapevines. This is a Felco 2 pruning shear and I have used this type of pruning shear for over 30 years. It's not necessarily the best choice but I began pruning with this particular shear and I'm comfortable with it. There are many choices to be made and some of them are much more ergonomic than this particular shear. What did, that, what did I mean by that? I mean that sometimes the more advanced pruning shears have rotating handles, have different angles to the handles to make it much more comfortable to use those types of shears than the one pictured here. If possible, try to borrow a pair of shears or a couple pairs from different people and try them out before you just go out and buy one. And then you'll decide for yourself what really is a comfortable fit for you. Because you're going to spend a lot of hours with this shear if you're doing much grape pruning and you want to make a good choice. Personally, I don't care for this type of shear. This is what we would call an anvil cut shear, where the blade comes down against a flat surface. It is cumbersome. After a while, the cut is not crisp. The anvil portion of the shear can be difficult to insert in places of the vine where you want to make a close cut. And in general, I would say avoid anvil cut shears and go for the type that has a bypass cut as we showed you previously with the Felco shears. Well, there are shears that are very sophisticated. This is a battery powered pruning shear and some of these can cost as much as two thousand dollars. I have only once tried one of these and it was interesting but I've never made the commitment to this type of pruning shear. But people that do make the commitment often say they like it for pruning hours and hours at a time. There are also pneumatic shears that may cost in the $500 range that can be used to make the job easier than just a manually used pair of pruning shears. But that will be your personal choice and it will depend on your pocketbook or your wallet. It will depend on how many hours you plan to spend pruning. The second type of equipment 
that is often utilized when pruning grapevines is a lopper. As pictured here, this is a short pair, I believe the brand is Corona, I'm not positive, a short pair, 14 inch pair of Corona loppers. And I find these very, very handy. They can be utilized in all kinds of ways from pruning cuts of canes when you're spurring down to making bigger cuts and as we'll see when I proceed with this presentation, I never go to the vineyard with just one tool. I always go to the vineyard with at least two tools and sometimes more. And this is one of the most basic parts of my pruning tool system right here, a 14 inch lopper. Well, here's another kind of lopper. This is a 26 inch Corona lopper. I really like this tool also. And the particular lopper in this picture, I've used for many, many years, and it's quite durable. You will find that this can make cuts up to one and a half or even two inches in diameter on arms, on trunks, and that's where it really is handy. Now there are other kinds of loppers that can also be very handy. I used to use a pair of ratchet loppers when I was cutting off large trunks one after the other. So if you look through the catalogs or go online you'll find many kinds of loppers. Many of them now have metal handles rather than the wooden ones here. I prefer the wooden handled loppers, but you may choose otherwise. But you're going to want one or two sizes of loppers for sure when you're starting to prune grapevines. Well, here's something that is not standard at all. I've been preaching the use of a reciprocal saw like this for quite a few years now, at least five years because I discovered how handy this is when pruning out large parts of the vine. I need to qualify that though and say it is particularly useful when making cuts near the ground. Here's another picture of it. This tool works superbly when making cuts relatively near the ground where things are stable. It becomes less useful when you get up higher on the trellis and the part of the vine you're trying to prune has some movement to it. Then this reciprocating saw may not be so useful. But as pictured here, an 18 volt system that I happen to have and especially with the lithium batteries that last a while, are really, really a nice addition to the pruning that you're going to do on grapevines. I usually carry two batteries with me when I'm doing this, depending upon how many hours I'm going to be pruning. But you can make quite a few decent cuts with this tool. Here's a close-up of the blade. This, as it might be recognizable to you, is a specific pruning blade. It's manufactured by the Porter Cable Company, and there may be other brands that are similar to this. But this type of tooth arrangement is wonderful for cutting the larger parts of grapevines. And I find that even though I try to avoid the trellis wires, if I nick the wires with this particular blade, I don't cut the wires. I may scratch it and that's not a good thing either. But if you take a different type of blade in a reciprocal saw, you might quite quickly cut right through a trellis wire. Not good, not good. 
So these come in a package of about three blades for ten dollars and you can afford to replace those fairly often if you're doing a lot of pruning and it will still be of great value to you. Now we're going to demonstrate the reciprocal saw and we'll talk more about it. There's the cut we're making. We had already made a cut at the base of the trunk and now we're pulling off the old piece of cordon that had died. And there you have it. This is a pretty handy tool and I like it for pruning big wood even more than using a large loppers. Well, it may surprise you that a chainsaw can be another helpful tool when pruning grapevines. Yes, indeed. This happens to be a beautiful little 7-pound, 12-inch chain chainsaw that weighs so little that you can use it for extended periods of time quite comfortably. And this type of tool is particularly helpful when pruning out large numbers of old trunks that have died from a major winter injury event. We're going to give you an example of this in action. Here we go. Look at that. Go right down. Cut. We speeded up the video, yes, we have for the sake of time, but you see what we're doing here? We're doing the first step in pruning out a lot of dead old trunks that happened to die from a major winter injury event. So don't give up on the thought of using a chainsaw in certain situations. Well, now we're going to talk a little about using these tools. And let's start by saying that I think you will find it handy if you always go to the vineyard with at least two tools. Here's a pruning shears and here's a short lopper on either side of my hip. But it may be some other combination of a couple tools. You may want to take at times the larger lopper with you. But if you go to the vineyard with just a pruning shears in hand you're often going to be at a deficit in terms of pruning efficiency. So consider at least two tools when you go to the vineyard. There's a few comments about the pruning shears here. I carry those on my right hip because I'm right-handed and I can keep them close at hand and readily grab those pruning shears because I elect to take the lock that would lock those pruning shears right off. And I keep those shears in an open situation all the time. I grasp them, I close them, I put them in that leather tool holder, and when I release them, they sit there nicely. You see how scratched up that tool holder is? That's because I do it without looking. I have used these so long that I can, without looking, put that pruning shears where it needs to be, release it, and grab it again quickly. Now over time that two holder gets to looking pretty messy and it can get rather soft and flabby. And here's a little secret. Take it and put it in water and soak the leather and then form it back to the shape you want and let it dry that way and it'll be stiff all over again and ready to go. There's a couple tips on using a pruning shear off the hip of the hand you use for pruning. Okay, here's the loppers on the other hip. And I leave those open too. And the holder that I have there is normally used to hold a great big power drill with an 18 volt battery on it. But I just want something that I can readily slip one of the handles of that lopper into that tool holder without looking. 
because I'm so accustomed to where it goes and I can quickly interchange from one tool to the other so that it's handy. If I have to take a lot of time to change tools, then that becomes a problem. Here we are in the spring of 2014 and I'm teaching a class on pruning and the poor students that came down from our main campus at Michigan State on this day happened to get a not so good day for their field trip. But we're about to go into the vineyard and demonstrate some pruning techniques. I just want to show you that there is the pruning shears on my right hip. There is the small lopper on my left hip and we can grab those readily and we're going to show you this in a very short video clip now how quickly you can get accustomed to going back and forth to get the right tool for the right job. Okay, here we go. Just a few seconds of this clip to show you how we use two tools interchangeably. I was using it to make a few small cuts at the bottom with the lopper. We're done there. Now this has been speeded up a little, but it's still just that quick to put one tool away and get the other tool to go on making pruning cuts with the shears. Well, here's another arrangement for taking pruning equipment into the vineyard. I call this the pruning bucket, and perhaps sometime you would find some variation of this theme useful to you. This is not helpful at all when you've got a lot of snow and ice because it's just a nuisance. But in the good weather in spring, I often find the pruning bucket very handy. And here are a few things about this bucket. First of all, the first thing I do is take the handle and I wire it with zip ties so that the handle is fixed straight up. So it's quick and easy to grab the handle of this bucket and go. The second thing I've done is make a cylinder with slits in it that readily holds that 26 inch lopper. So I can put that in the bucket and when I'm ready I can grab the handles of that lopper and go with those. Those are quick. Then with the reciprocal saw I built a little rectangular box and that's drilled and fixed with zip ties on the side you can't see so that the reciprocal saw slides into that little rectangular area just like a glove, slips right in like a hand in a glove. And I carry a file, which we're going to talk about soon, for touching up the equipment quick and handy. And there's other things that will go in this bucket at the bottom at times. It might be an extra pair of gloves. It might be a Diet Pepsi. It might be some cookies. It might be extra batteries for the reciprocal saw or various other things because there's a little extra room in the bottom of the bucket. And I use this. I carry it, set it by a vine, do the work I'm doing. When I'm done with the vine, pick it up, move, move it a few more feet to the next vine and there it sits till I'm ready to use something out of the bucket. Maybe you'll find some variation of this theme helpful to you. Well here are just a few pointers about maintaining your tools so they will work well for you. Years ago when I began to practice the art of pruning grapevines we often used a little sharpening stone like this to touch up the blade and we did that with some frequency as we went down the vineyard row. Some people may still like that but I have given up on the little sharpening stone and instead I like to use a file. This is the file I've been using that looks like I need a new one. Something that's not coarse textured, uh, that's kind of medium weight and I use that to file the blades of the various loppers and the hand shears that I use. 
and I'll just give you a few ideas about using a file like this. I use this every time I go in the vineyard before I start I file the edges of my shears and the loppers I'm going to use and sometimes if I'm working long days with many hours of pruning I will stop and sharpen those tools through the day also. Well here is a relatively crude, I admit, schematic of the cross section of a blade on a lopper or on a pruning shear of the type that I use. And there is a blade that has a very flat side to it and then a curved side. And we intend to sharpen that always from the curved side. So if we put a file against that blade, it would look something like this. And we would just make a few passes, if we're doing this on a regular basis, to sharpen the very bottom edge of that blade to get it sharp so it works well for you. After you've done that, take the file and just remove any burrs that have formed from that first sharpening process by putting the file flat against the flat surface and just clean off any burrs that are right on the edge. Do not do this. Do not make an angled filing cut on the flat edge because you'll move that blade away from the other part of the cutting surface and you will have problems cutting. Don't ever do this type of filing on a blade of this type. And a few more pointers and we'll be done. I enlarged this part of a lopper to remind me to tell you that periodically check to make sure that the lopper is nice and flat of one cutting surface against the other and you may need to adjust that with that nut showing here or on your uh, shears, there's a different arrangement with the screw, but it's the same idea. And get that so that they're just tight. Tighten it down so till it won't move, and then back off a little so you have a nice smooth cut of one part of the blade going past the other part. And while you're doing that, put some lubrication on here. I haven't done it uh, on this one, but clean off the blade a little and put a little lubrication. I've gotten to using kind of a spray grease out of a spray can, but anything that will give a little lubrication action is a good thing to do, and I do that uh, probably every two or three days. Well, that's it. We hope some of the information presented here will be helpful to you in your pruning. Until next time, we'll simply say, happy grape growing.